Hey guys, Joe Tunney here at Infinity of Kirkland taking a look at a 2003 Honda Odyssey that was just traded in here at Infinity of Kirkland. And I'll tell you, this car reminds me of why so much of the car business is outside of the measurables. Sure, there's Kelly Blue Book on the customer's end and Carfax. For us, there's Mannheim Market Report, other auction reports that we use, our new Market Plus system that we use that gives us an idea of things. But so much of this business really filters down to trust. And that's where this car comes in. It's an inexpensive car. You trust that it'll do the right thing for your family. I trust by selling it to you that you've made a wise investment of your money. The owner of the dealership trusts that I've made the right decision in keeping this car here at the dealership and not just sending it off to the auction. And so when I look at this car, it's a one owner car, it's a really nice car, but the car shows, uh, the car pack shows that it's from Louisiana initially and ha had been in an accident in Louisiana. And so me being a naturally kind of doubtful person, whenever I hear stories about cars, I'm naturally kind of disbelieving of them because most people I don't think are truly qualified to explain the dynamics of a car. And more often than not, they simply are misrepresenting things to get more money for their trade-in or for whatever car a wholesaler is trying to sell us. And so me being the natural skeptic, when I see a car from Louisiana has been in an accident, I'm thinking it's been in Hurricane Katrina, the car has been upside down floating down the road in some kind of flood, has been banged into by a million other cars, and this car is a complete disaster. And so for the person that I'm selling this car to, they don't care about the story. All they care about is when they have to take their kids to school and they turn the ignition over, does this car start or does it not start? If they're driving down the road and a soccer ball jumps out in front of them and a kid's chasing it and they slam on the brakes, is this car going to stop or is it not going to stop? Are the power locks working? Does the air conditioning blow? Does the stereo turn on? All the other fundamentals that make owning a car a fun experience can also be an expensive headache if there's problems with the car. So the owner trusts my decision to keep this car here in the dealership and I hope that I'm qualified enough that you trust my decision to price it where we priced it and to offer it to you. Actually, this car is a really nice car and I want to show you why I know that it's a really nice car even though it shows that it's been in an accident on the Carfax. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the hood on this car. Now, people pop the hood all the time on cars. I don't know exactly what they're looking for. Most people, myself included, don't have the first clue how to work on cars, especially modern cars. Yet, customers always want to look under the hood. There is actually something very valuable that can be discovered by looking underneath the hood, and you don't need any kind of mechanical aptitude at all. That thing is these stickers right here. These are the original VIN stickers that are on a car when the car is shipped to its dealer. And so this VIN, which means vehicle identification number, this number on this stamp right here is the same as the one in the dashboard. Now you can say, well, can't people just make these? Actually, it's a felony to make these and it's definitely a felony to put them on a car. And so this is how the government protects against chop shop cars being all over the place. You can find a chop shop car in about two seconds thanks to these serialized stickers right here. And they have a certain pattern to them, a certain personality to them. They can only be applied as perfectly as they are by a robot. A human can't uh, achieve the perfect amount of glue on the back of these. And so if you see one that's been kind of jimmied in there, the edges will be curled or there will be what's called a footprint of glue around the outside. So if they use even just a teeny tiny bit too much glue, the, uh, there will be too much around this ring. And if they don't use enough, then it will be uh, it'll peel up on the corners. So I know this fender's original, and I know the hood's original, and I know that that fender's original. So, so far so good. Whatever happened didn't happen to the front of the car, and that's actually the most serious place that an accident can happen. Panels can always be replaced, but whenever a car has been hit in the front and that shake of the engine, you don't know if that shook everything off of its axis, if it shook the relationship between the uh, engine and transmission, and they just don't talk to each other right anymore, or it's just the front, which is all of the, the mechanics of a front-wheel drive-based car, is the front just compromised in such a way that this thing will just never drive right again. So the fact that it didn't happen here, whatever it was was going on, is already a plus. We're going to take a look around. And so I'm going to notice there's a little crack right here in the bumper, but that's no big deal. A couple little scratches, but teeny tiny ones. 
outside looks quite nice. The roof, everyone always forgets to look at the roof. The roof looks great. It's got roof rack rails. It also has dual power sliders. So we're going to make sure those feel right and sound right. Does that feel like it opens the way it's supposed to? Does the interior look the way that it's supposed to? Does it have any kind of unusual fragrance or odor? Dog hairs, mold, must, anything like that? No. It actually looks dynamite inside. It, it particularly so for a car that's 10 years old, it looks fantastic. The uh, Even the small details like the cup holder, they look completely original and unworn. The seats themselves look un original and unworn. And if you look at even the floor mats, the floor mats look like we just put them in this afternoon brand new. They look fantastic. All the carpets look great on this car. Now, I mentioned that thing about the stickers. Where, where there's one sticker, there are stickers all around the car. So every single panel needs to have one of these stickers. That tells me that this door is original. And that this door is original. And that the rear fender is original. But we're going to go back to the trunk and we're going to see if it didn't happen in the front and it didn't happen in the side, then it had to happen in the back. And so when I look at this rear bumper, the rear bumper is actually original. So I'm a little bit confounded because you can't have a car that's been in an accident where every single piece on the car is original. And so as I look around, I discover there's one body panel, and it's this uh, trunk lid right here, the, uh, that does not have a sticker on it. Could still be the original panel. That sticker could have been painted over if it was painted. But I'm going to look at the screws that hold everything together, and I'm going to discover that this screw and this screw and this screw and this screw, they've all been turned with a wrench. Now, how do I know they've been turned with a wrench? Because the edges are a little bit chafed on all four of them. So it doesn't take a genius to figure out that this trunk lid has been taken off of the car. In fact, it's also been put back on the car without a sticker being affixed to it, which means it's probably not the original uh, trunk lid that came with this car. So even though the bumper is original, uh, the tailgate itself is not. And so I'm going to imagine, just being a logical person, that something hit the car here without hitting it on the bumper. And that happens. And so it could have been where the glass itself was broken, maybe a, a taller truck or something like that, or something with a, a spare tire in the front, or uh, some other apparatus where the uh, it was a little bit uh, top biased, perhaps broke this window. I'm going to guess it might be cheaper to replace just the whole door than just to get this window by itself. The uh, As silly as it sounds, the uh, to get just the one rear glass, you never hear about these things breaking, and so it's harder sometimes to get a rear window than it is to get a whole assembly, and perhaps they just replaced the whole thing, or maybe it was bent in or something like that. But the good news is there's really nothing in here. So whatever was damaged in the back, there's nothing to have any kind of corresponding damage here. The thing I'd be worried about is if the bumper was also replaced, because then I'd be worried if the, the all the mechanics underneath were pushed in, the spare tire area was compromised, or the rear suspension was messed up. So if I had to pick what kind of accident is the accident that bothers me the least, that actually is probably it. Not just on vans, but on cars in general. If it's just the trunk lid that's replaced, it's kind of like the safest area to not get in a jam buying that kind of car, because there's no mechanical things that are in that area. And then if I go to this door here, again, original uh, VIN sticker. So whatever it was, uh, didn't make it that far. And then I want to make sure that the fender is original in that area, and the fender is original as well as the uh, front door. Now let's take a look inside. As I've said on videos before, this is 2013, and in the middle of 2012, I sold my 10,000th car in the Seattle marketplace. What that means to you is, I have no interest in trying to screw you up. I sell a lot of cars. I'm going to sell a lot more cars, and I'm probably going to sell cars till the day I die. I've been here for 10 years. I have no interest in going anywhere else. So trying to screw around and put a bunch of misinformation in your head to sell an inexpensive car that I can just sell at the auction and would bring top dollar, it just doesn't make any sense at all. I get to know my customers so well over the years, whether it's I'm a good-natured person or I just happen to have a lot of nice customers, I get to know everybody over the years, and so they become my friends whether I want them to or not. I just see everybody at the grocery store, at the movies, at my kids' school right down the street at Hollywood Hill Elementary right here in Woodenville. And so I don't want to screw you up, and I don't want you to be afraid that I'm going to hide anything from you. 
if you want to take this car to the Honda dealer and have a buyer's inspection done on it, I would. It's not that big of a deal. If you think that my qualified opinion isn't qualified enough for you, so be it. I can live with that. I want you to be happy and comfortable and convinced that not only did you get a good deal, but much more importantly, you got a good car. So let's start by just pointing out the truth about the car. It's really actually quite a nice car. Come in, take it for a nice drive, see if it looks, feels, handles, drives the way you want it to. If you want somebody else to give you a third opinion about it, that's totally cool. If you want me to just take some more photographs of the car, maybe the undercarriage or anything like that, or a totally different kind of video that's custom tailored to your needs, don't hesitate to give me a call. My name's Joe Tunney here at Infinity of Kirkland. You can reach me anytime at 425-821-1600, or just drop me an email anytime at joet at infinityofkirkland.com.